Hi everyone, it is March 23rd, 2018. I'm going to read some of this article written by Katherine Frompovich. Is it fickle mother nature or determined weather geoengineering? Nor'easter number four and rainwater analysis. The analysis showed that there are new ingredients or ingredients that have not been detected and I'll go into those ingredients in one moment but I have heard from an awful lot underneath my videos on these weather events and the snowfalls up north many people writing snowflakes unusually large snow not melting just kind of evaporating not leaving any water behind Snow, it doesn't look real. It's perfectly round and falling as if they're beads. And when handled and squeezed between fingers, it's not just going away. It is like a gel. It morphs into a different shape. And then when released, it goes back into that bead shape. You know, I remember the snowfall there were unusual snowfalls when I was living back in up north, Great Barrington. And I, it, it was either the winter of uh, 2011, 2012. I think it was that winter. The snow that fell was so unusual. Looking at it closely, it looked like multicolored metallic crystals. One snowfall... I remember, landed with a strange icy gleam on top, and there was a light gray covering over it. So as I was reading this article, that's it reminded me of the many comments that I've received from you, as well as what I experienced up north. No, nothing is normal today. The fourth nor'easter in just short of three weeks? Everybody should be questioning that. But I agree with Catherine Frompovich when she writes, it seems like it's an exercise in planned obedience to see just what can be effectuated in human behavior. And unfortunately, I think many of you would agree that what you are seeing up north in the northeast that many people are just walking around as if nothing has changed, nothing unusual, not questioning what is taking place. And I'm reading this section of the article because I have received comments from some of you writing that plants that you have and it's not the snow that is killing off the shrubs and plants, but something in the snow. And Catherine Frapovich, she writes about a beautiful green boxwood shrub that she had had for many years in this large garden pot at the back wall of her patio, under a very wide overhang from above her bedroom protecting it from all weather. It was devastated when snow had blown onto it, completely covering the plant, and when the snow melted, there was white stuff over every leaf. Well, that plant died. It turned brown, dried up. She has no idea what that white stuff was. And even asks if any scientists would like to um, determine what it was, just let her know. Now, during a short snowfall right before the northeaster approached, she found that there were small snow pellets reminding her of round white candies on top of chocolates. That is not normal snow. But she was amazed to see the size, the configuration of the snowflakes. 
I'm reading this because I think that many of you will relate to what she's saying. Your observation of these snowflakes. How she describes it? Torn pieces of white Kleenex dropped from the sky. The snowflake forms were jagged like torn, large, extremely white pieces of Kleenex. So, um, yes, she writes th that she's having the same experience as many of us. Now, she has seen the snow for almost 80 years, and she's never seen anything like what she has seen in these nor'easters. But she collected rainwater in November of 2017 and paid to have it analyzed by a certified laboratory. And the results? Well, she has been a, a journalist, a, a, an author, and for decades has written on nutrition, health issues, and for many, many years has been the author of numerous, countless articles and books on the poisons in vaccines, writing about how dangerous is this Wi-Fi environment that we are living, these microwave frequencies that are pulsating at us, creating an awful lot of damage to our health, as well as the geoengineering. So, the results of the analysis of the rainwater, scandium, a silvery white metallic deep block element, a rare earth element found in rainwater. And it is suggested that some of the compounds might be carcinogenic. When inhaled, it can cause lung embolisms especially during long-term exposure. And it can be a threat to the liver when it accumulates in the human body. And it has negative influences on reproduction and functions of the nervous systems of water animals. Ger germanium, a lustrous grayish white metalloid. It's extremely flammable and explosive when mixed with air. Adverse health effects include irritation to the eye, skin, respiratory tract, and it may cause lesions on blood vessels. This, unfortunately, activist post needs to um, reconfigure its uh, website because it's blocking out some of the article with this section where they're highlighting articles. Indium, a soft, ductile, silvery, white metal liquid. Indium compounds can damage the heart, kidney, and liver. It can cause birth defects. And there's insufficient data about the range of effects on human health. Tellarium, Mildly toxic silver white metalloid chemically related to sulfur and selenium and is found in coal. Ingesting even a small amount causes bad smelling breath and appalling body odor. When absorbed into the body by inhalation of its aerosol, it can be absorbed by inhalation. The effects of the inhalation include drowsiness, dry mouth, metal taste, headache, garlic odor, and nausea. The aerosol can irritate the eyes and respiratory tract. It can have adverse effects on the liver and central nervous system, and it can cause abdominal pain, constipation, and vomiting. Terbium. It's a silvery, white, rare earth, malleable metal. Its powder form and compound are very irritating to skin and eyes. And bismuth, a white crystalline or crystalline 
brittle metal having a pinkish tint. It can cause kidney damage. Toxicity can result in the form of bodily discomfort. Um, it can cause other proteins in urine, diarrhea, skin reactions, and exodermatitis. It enters the body via inhalation, skin, and ingestion. And there can be acute and chronic adverse health effects from exposure. How are these rare earth metals getting into the rainwater? Yes, one has to surmise that what's going on within those lines sprayed in the sky called chemtrails, or weather management, or weather geoengineering, solar radiation management, well, that they're spraying this. And perhaps it does play a key role in making or managing weather, or perhaps, and or perhaps, they're spraying it because they know that it's toxic and causing an awful lot of health problems. The one point that I really want to stress is that while we do now know that we've got the basic ingredients to the geoengineering, which is aluminum and um, barium, there is so much we don't know. And it is affecting an awful lot of people. Doctors are unable to diagnose an awful lot of people who have chronic health issues and chronic pain. We are living a time where all of us are assaulted now 24-7 with so many toxic dangers that it has now forced upon so many of us a, a time of living every single day trying to figure out how to feel better. And so many and I get this based on the comments that I'm reading, are really struggling now and unable to figure out ways to feel better. You need to know the cause. Without knowing the cause, how do you cure what is going on? So I just wanted to tell you that there's a lot more going on than we know. I'll link below to